ladies and gents, welcome back. Now I know, now I know you were expecting the Macho Man, but I can't bring him out too often. Still, I have a lot of builds to cover, so, you know, without wasting too much time, let me introduce you guys to, as I promised, the Malkyrion Shock Sword. Now this was something I was asked for way before the uh, 1.70 update, and in fact, it's something that's still been on a lot of people's minds, like, Bro, can you make me a Malk sword build that will shock the living daylights out of my opponents? I said, yes, I can. And in fact, this is one of the most unique builds because it is one of the only builds that focuses on situational cells. Let me explain that in more depth, all right? Let's get into the build right now and I'll show you what I mean. First of all, you start off with Cyclonic Fury, all right? That's your Malkyrian sword, double Berserker Cell, Avenging Overdrive, Recursive Hilt, standard for a lot of my sword builds that you've seen on stream and other uh, elsewhere. Thundering Blade. Now, you could also use the Storm Sword, but Thundering Blade just has a lot more meaning to me. Now, you might think, wait a minute, don't you need Energize to keep up your special? Yeah, and no. I'll, I'll show you why. Uh, but just suffice to say, Thundering Blade is generally accepted as a, as a good choice. Um, you can, however, I'll be honest with you guys, if you really want to, please use the Storm Sword. If you feel that you need to energize, use the Storm Sword. There is no problem with using that, okay? It, it still works just fine. Iceborne is your passive. Very, very standard for a lot of my builds. Skarn's Defiance with Etheric Attunement Cell. Nasher Cap, Toughness Cell. As, all, as I always say, standard. Time Weave Robes, Overpower, standard. Nasher Grips, Rage Hunter, standard. Nasha Treads, Tenacious, Standard. What this gives you, all right, what this gives you is overall, okay? I'll remove my cam for a second. A third attunement plus six, your Landon cools down 50% faster, so you're, you've got plenty of shields to keep you alive. Berserker, lots of raw damage. Tenacious, lots of raw damage. Plus six toughness, lots of healing if you do take HP, HP damage. And of course, more uh, HP for Tenacious as well. Now, the other two, the two situational cells are Overpower and Rage Hunter. The reason that we use these in place of other um, raw damage amplifiers, such as Predator, Adrenaline, things like that, is that swords, to be fair, don't consume that much stamina. And if you're using Recursive Hill, it means you're probably using um, my particular combo style, which is Dash and then Slash. Um, if you're using that kind of combo style, you will recover your stamina really fast because just, just so you know, the recursive dash, um, the dash and slash thing, recovers your stamina. So an adrenaline build was honestly not suited for this. Like, I could falsely deplete my stamina, but it was not as efficient as if I were to use adrenaline on the pike. So if I were to make a Malkyrion pike build, which if you guys request it, I will probably make, um, I, would, I would be using a very different build to the sword. With the sword, I have a different style. Oh! Pan Panulf is now following. Panulf, thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate that. Um, Mid-video follow rarely happens, but it's interesting. However, this the sword itself often stuns. It often shocks, which triggers overpower, and it staggers really well, which triggers overpower. So you have more situations where overpower is valid. Furthermore, if the behemoth enrages, you straight up get the rage hunter bonus. So again, although there are situational cells here, it works, and I'm about to show you. The fact that it works right now let's let's actually get into a combat showcase if you guys don't want to see it as always uh don't forget to do the usual hold on let me get my face back first come on face don't forget to like share and subscribe if you don't want to see the combat showcase and of course you can always drop a tip via the link in the description of the video if you want to support my content you want to see more of the macho man that is the best way to do it now you've got a level six sword here so i think we should have no problem taking on something like the snowblind waste all right so with this particular build, I'm not too worried on how much damage you can dish out because you can dish out a lot with this one, just to be fair. Yeah, I've had I've had no trouble smashing things with this. So it's a very, very easy and simple situation. Now. Okay, hold on while it loads. There we are. And sorry about 
including loading times, but unfortunately, you know, it's a must to show the legitimacy of every build. Okay, now one cool thing about this is that um, although there are situational cells, their situational cells are only increase increase based. So I don't have anything that'll disappear like Predator in this build or stuff like that. I mean Tenacious could technically disappear, but that's only if you lack caution or you go two ham. Alright, never go full ham, only go half ham. Alright, so we're starting off with a level 12 cool shot, nothing too fantastic. Um, this build is simple. You open up with your slashes however you want to do it. Usually I'll do something like that. You see, even if I even if I didn't want to restore stamina, I en I would end up doing so. So, so there's not much I can do here. Now, if you if you end up near the tail, one cool thing that you can do is start slashing that tail. Why? Because it does additional damage. And as soon as you're you're into it, there you go. This is where you start to, you know, get your uh, slashy time. Now, again, if you're near the tail, go ahead and start slashing it. Why? It does more damage. Behemoth and Rage? No problem. More damage. Oh my god, I hate these cool shots sometimes. It's so annoying. Legit. I mean, there's quite honestly a reason why we delete them. Now, this build does not have as much survivability built in because um, you really shouldn't be dealing with uh, too many situations where that extra survivability is needed. But it does have its own effective moments, so enjoy that. Problem is that cool shots don't stay down for long, so that's annoying as well. So, all right, we did die once, but again, you know, although this build doesn't have a lot of survivability built in, and I personally hate Alcurion weapons because they just don't dish out as much as other weapons, it's still okay. It's still, if you really want a stun sword, this is this is this is what you got, um, and you are gonna be able to take on things above and beyond your level. So you know, that's that's something that. Uh, you will still be able to handle and do. So, you know, don't sweat that too much. Just make good use of the sword where you can. Okay, dodge where you have to. Okay. You can make good use of Avenging to just uh, dish out some serious pain to enemies, but the stuns do not last long on a lot of behemoths, so I don't know. Me personally, I like the stun sword, but as nice as it is, sometimes it uh, feels a little lackluster compared to other status effects. But then again, I mean, if you really wanted like burning you'd have gone for the uh, Torg style in the first place, so... You know, it's, it's up to you how you want to play it. Like, this is a behemoth that's 8 levels above me, so I'm not, like, too worried on how well I'm doing, but... Oops, sorry. Like, you'll still do plenty well, it's just, you know, you have to, you have to understand that... Uh, compared to the other statuses, this one is not as strong as, as you might like it to be, so... 
Just be aware of that, like you don't have to worry about it, but be aware of it, is what I'm saying. And I knew you'd do that, come on. At the very least though, there is the the one good part about this is that you do you do get a chance to shock, stun, and do all that kind of shenanigans to these uh, behemoths as much as you please, so. There is that. So, you know, enjoy yourself. The stun sword is good, again, but um, shocking a behemoth is sometimes not always the ideal effect that you want. And also, again, if you want to really, like, do this, the etheric attunement may not always be the best bond. Like, I'm just gonna show you if I do this with um, the... What you call it? The Nezaga sword instead? No, sorry, the Stormclaw sword. Um, Energize can also have a great effect here. Like, you don't necessarily... Because you don't always focus on the tail, so... You can still have etheric attunement. This is a mix... This is mixed between etheric attunement and energized. Okay? So you want to see this version of it. As you dodge, you also... Uh, Dish out, dish out more. Uh, you sorry, you gain more energy, so that's also very useful. All right, level twelve, Beaver Boy. Okay, gain additional energy. There we go. Basically, you can literally rip into a behemoth like that. Now, personally, I do prefer um, the energized style over the full etheric attunement style. But it's up to you. Some people do favor the Drask. I'm like, nah. A lot of people say like the Drask is the best spawn for Malfurions, but I've always favored the Stormclaw, at least on a sword. Because the etheric attunement doesn't bother me much. At least if I can get my parry up faster. But again, it boils down to personal preference. Some people prefer one way, some people prefer the other. It's up to you how you want to structure uh, your combat. Okay, let's go. Let's go deeper out. Now you'll notice I haven't used the legendary ability at all throughout this entire showcase, and that's because um, you don't have to. It's not even necessary for this. If you want to, though. It's just hel it's helpful for getting into combat, and then for doing shenanigans. No! I failed! It happens though. You can go pretty ham at this thing, though. That's what I like. Like you can combo things for quite a duration if you, if this is used well. Again, that's what I like about it. And if you do get those sick combos, you can deplete a lot of life off the of beam. Please keep in mind this is a level seven sword versus a level um, thirteen rift stalker. And with the Energize on this build, like, it's just a lot easier to deal with uh, several of the other things that uh, these behemoths do. Okay. Chopping literally fits off this this thing. There you go. 
So the Stormclaw Sword is just as is just as powerful. In fact, I find it better. So yeah, there you go. Combat showcase complete. Ladies and gents, thank you so much for enjoying this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And of course, if you want to, you can drop a tip via the link in the description of the video. Let's go to that tipper thank you page. Thank you, everybody. And thank you to July's top tippers. Thank you to Bravo7910, Idget751, Breachinator, Sean, Lewis Grave, Drew ZGG, Vamps. I appreciate you all. I'm going to go kill that event shortly. But like I said, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for enjoying the Malkyrian Stun Sword. And of course, leave a tip if you feel like giving me your spare change. Links in the description of the video. It's my current income, so help out the Macho Man. You want to see more content, and I'll catch you all on the next one, folks. Bye-bye.